All right, today I'm gonna to talk to you about why it's important that you keep a training journal. All right, so there's an old Chinese proverb that goes, the faintest of inks is more powerful than the strongest of memories. So what this basically means is that your memory is essentially a little bit flawed. And by keeping a journal or writing stuff down, you're actually gonna have a better memory of it in the long term. So by keeping a journal, you must also be completely honest and transparent with it. You can't be saying that, oh, I did this, when you only did half of what you actually say you did. So the journal must be completely honest at the same time. So what a training journal is gonna allow you to do is not only keep progress between workouts week to week, but also workouts in the long run. You're gonna be able to see your progress in the long term, not just short term, but long term progress. So you can compare the same workout week to week, but also if you come back and do the same workout, say in another six months or in a year, for example, if you're doing German volume training with back squats and you did the first time you did it, 150 pounds or 200 pounds, and by the end of the cycle of it, you're now doing it with 225 pounds, you're able to see, okay, week to week what the progress was, what the progress was at the end compared to at the beginning. And then you're also able to see how many reps that you were able to complete throughout all of it. And say you come back and do German volume training in a year, and the first week you're able to do 235 pounds. Well, you're able to then go back and take a look and see, okay, I have gotten this much stronger over the past six months or a year between doing the two workouts, and my work capacity is at a higher level than it was. Another great benefit to do training journal is it's gonna actually cause you to see progress faster and much better progress in the long term because you're not just gonna be weighing it on the weight that you're using the number of reps. You're able to see discreetly exactly what you were able to do on the last workout. You're able to then, using the Kaizen principle, the principle of constant and never ending improvement, to add a little bit of weight and push yourself a little bit harder or take the same number of reps that you did the previous workout and maybe add one more rep. One more rep in the long term, if you're adding a rep every single workout during the same kind of training cycle, you're gonna see greater progress. Another great thing is that it's gonna allow you to keep very detailed notes. For some people, they're gonna be able to, they'll actually wanna write down how they felt in a workout and keeping track of other metrics, like if they used a pre-workout that day, what time they worked out, what to, how long the workout took, uh, how they felt during the rest. Some, some training logs will actually improve, include the rate of perceived exertion. So how hard a certain set actually felt to complete. Sometimes a single set, it might feel like an RPE of six, and then you could be doing the exact same weight, the exact same reps, but the next time you do the workout, it could feel like a nine or a 10. It might feel like your spleens were able to, ready to pop out of your eyes because it's just one of those days you're just not quite feeling it. When it comes to teams in a training journal, it causes all the athletes on the team to stay meticulous in what they're doing. It will also cause and force them all to be honest. Now, of course, as a strength coach, we have to keep an eye on them because at the end of the day, you're gonna see athletes kind of take some shortcuts in a team setting. But what it will do, especially with those who are honest, is they're gonna see better progress. They're also gonna be able to see what they did year to year a lot easier. And they won't have to necessarily think back to base training the year before of, oh, what was I doing? They're able to then see right away, okay, this last year I was doing this and at the end, let's see if I could do what my end workout was in the beginning to kind of gauge where they're at when they first come in. And the other thing is it will actually allow for setting standards in the weight room with the team. We're able, us as strength coaches, we're then able to take a look at, okay, this is what the team was doing last year. Okay, so the standard is this for them this year. They're a year older, they're a year stronger, they've got another year of training under their belt. It will also keep them accountable to filling in their workout logs. Now a note on within a training log, especially if you're when you're writing everything down, is if you're necessarily not feeling it on a certain day or you're just you're feeling a little stiff and whatnot and you put a little modification into the exercise, like if instead of squatting with your feet flat on the ground, you have a wedge under your heels. This allows you to then put right into the journal, okay, squatted with the with wedged heels. And you're able to then see, okay, how was each workout in the long term going? If you started out with heels wedged and now you're going with your feet flat on the ground and hitting full ranges of motion, for example, then you're seeing, okay, 
I'm progressing with my range of motion, the weight is either staying or increasing each time. So there's multiple ways that the training journal will actually allow you to track your progress and also accelerate your progress throughout your training cycles and seeing how you train for year to year and throughout your life. So now on the screen, what you're gonna see is an example of one of my own workout cards that I give to my clients and athletes. It gives a good breakdown of everything that they do. Uh, so on the far left here, you're gonna see kind of the series of the workout. So your A's, your B's, your C series, and if it's supersetted, and then you get into the actual meat and potatoes of the workout itself. So you've got the exercise, so the basic setup of what it is, and in the box below, any kind of modification or specific type of uh, specific setup for the exercise. And then the number of sets that this exercise requires, the rep range. Uh, I use the Polyquin system of tempo, so it's a four number breakdown. First number being the eccentric or the lowering of the weight. The second number is the pause at the bottom or in the stretch position. The third number is how quickly we're lifting that, that uh, implement. And then the last number is a pause between the reps or a squeeze in the contraction. And then the last kind of part of the actual exercise breakdown is the rest between exercises or between sets. If it's between exercises, it's an A1, A2 type of setup. And if it's just between sets, it's just a single, uh, like an egg over here on the right, you're gonna see it'll be, it's set up with two separate weeks. So you've got the first week where it's, okay, here's what you were doing and you're able to compare right there on the paper what you did for that week for each set. Each set is broken down into the weight you used and the number of reps that you completed on that set. Now, the only thing that matters here are quality reps. When I'm working with my clients and athletes, I don't care about garbage reps, they don't count. We only count the good quality reps and the full rep. If someone gets three and a half reps, how do we know that they didn't get three and two thirds of a rep? How do we know if it wasn't 3.2 reps? So we only count the full reps when we're filling out the workout card. All right, so now let's recap why it's important for you to keep a training journal. The biggest reason why is this way, you're able to have a better memory in the long term. A training journal, when it's written down, you're able to see exactly what you did. It's not like you're remembering a year from now, uh, did I do 220, 100 kilos for eight reps or 10 reps? Or was it 105 kilos that I only did for six? You're able to see exactly and go back and read. I was able to do this for five sets of six on this exercise. I was able to do 100 kilos the following week for five sets of seven on this exercise. Okay, so we're gonna see where I start with at this point. So the biggest thing to do when you're keeping your training journal is make sure that you're honest with yourself and you keep a very accurate record of it. This way, you're able to progress faster. And if you're gonna take a look back 20 years from now and you have kids or you're coaching athletes or someone else is trying to compare what you are doing to what they are currently doing, you're able to dig it out and see exactly Okay, these are the ways that I was doing, especially now that we're in the age with smartphones and we're able to record our highlight sets. This way we can see what we did for every set, every workout. So pick up, even if you're just picking up a small little notebook, keep a training log of what you're doing in the gym and you're gonna see that you progress faster. You're gonna see that you are able to stay more consistent with your training and you're gonna have much better workouts in the long term. All right, thank you for watching right to the end of this video. If you'd like to see more content by me, click the subscribe button here. And for another YouTube suggested video by me, click here. And if you liked what you saw today, don't forget, click the little like button below. Until next time, Coach Tony, Wrestling Podium Performance.